Right. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, this is the half semester of the course in differential and difference equation, right? So, <clears throat> we are going to discuss about difference equation, okay, in uh, this half semester. And basically, difference equation is the discrete counterpart of differential equation. Right? <clears throat> so, uh, I will show you my slide. Okay. Can you see? So there are several uh, materials in my website in Revolutu that you can also check. Okay. Uh, about differential uh, difference equation and system dynamic. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll discuss what is uh, uh, difference equation in this case, okay? And then I'll discuss uh, the simplest form of difference equation with this first order and affine. And then uh, I'll show you the solution. So the most important part is the equilibrium and stability. Okay, so during differential equation, uh, last time, did you learn about equilibrium and stability? No, not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, in differential equation and difference equation, the most important part is not the solution, but actually the equilibrium and stability because uh, these two are the key for the application. Okay. Uh, using this uh, three concept, okay. one is the solution, second is the equilibrium, and third one is the stability. Then you can apply this in uh, daily life. Okay. So why you learn this? Because you want to apply, right, in your daily life. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, I learn difference equation. Okay, differential equation I learned in undergrad, the same as you. Okay, but difference equation actually never taught before in Petra okay. and I just learned this when I started to take PhD and then at that time even nobody teach in, in, in a class okay so and I was in the trip uh, to uh, Kyoto and then uh, one of my classmate okay uh, a Korean a PhD student also and he talked about difference equation and whole day and night he talked about difference equation and I was so amazed about uh, the importance of uh, difference equation and he said why you don't know this is so important about the <laughs> everything in life is about difference equation that you don't know <laughs> okay and then uh, I started to realize okay after I, I, I learned this okay, I learned by myself and after I learned this it's true, okay? My, my life really changed. In fact, I, I got all my, my grant, research grant, even I travel around the world because of this difference equation. Wow, okay? <laughs> okay, I, I can finish my PhD because of difference equation, okay? In fact, the lesson today is the one that uh, will show you the key to the, to the solution, okay? So this is so important in fact, if you if you start to see later on, okay, once once you learn this, you will start to real really amaze okay, that this is really really important <clears throat> for anything <laughs> in life. <clears throat> you can think in terms of difference equation, okay? actually differential equation, but you can put it into computer into difference equation. Okay, so I hope this motivates you enough. <laughs> Okay, so 
both of them, a differential and difference equation are called dynamical system. Why? Because there is time component in, in it, right? So the one I'm talking today, okay, is actually a difference equation. So we call this discrete dynamical system. So why? Why we learn this, okay? DDS or discrete dynamical system will give you the foundation first, okay? And terminology for uh, many things, okay? Uh, for example, system dynamics. Okay? You will also learn about cellular automata in this course. Okay? I don't, I will probably touch a little bit about multi-agent system, but not so deep. Okay? And then, uh, discrete dynamical system is also uh, part of constraint simulation where you will uh, be able to solve analytical solution okay, before jumping to simulation. So, uh, when you learn about this, okay, you can think in terms of behavior of the system. Okay? You can think in terms of behavior of the system rather than just get the solution. So, even if you don't know the solution, okay, you're supposed to know the behavior of the system. Why? Because when you know the behavior of the system, you can already interact, you can already apply. Okay? And now, <laughs> compared to the continuous differential equation, discrete dynamical system is much easier. Okay? Much easier to understand, much easier to program, even in Excel. Okay? Okay, so let's start with the uh, uh, system. Okay? which is called static system. What is static system? We, we say dynamic system, dynamical system, okay? The opposite is statistic, uh, static system, isn't it? Right? What is static system? A static system is a system okay, that does not change over time. Okay, so what makes it dynamic is actually the, the change over time. Okay. Now, the value of the variables in the static system okay, consists only state variables that are constant. So there is no inflow, there is no outflow. So this is example, x equal five. Okay. So if I said x equal five, Hey, what is this? This is constant, right? X equal a constant, right? So, if I put it into time, okay, in continuous system, you will see uh, the one in the left side. Okay? If here, if I put it into discrete, so of course the time is discrete, right? So that's why uh, one by one. Huh? At time zero is five, at time one is five, at time two is five, and so on. Okay. <clears throat> so when we set a static system, the value of the variable x is constant over time. It doesn't mean there is no time. Okay. When we set static system, there is still time, but the value of that variable is constant over time. Is it clear? So when we say dynamic system, okay, is the, the state of the system is varies over time. So this is an example. Okay, x equal five t. You see there is t here. So if it is in continuous time, you will see over time it's increasing. Yeah? In in discrete dynamic system, over time is increasing, but the time is discrete. Okay. So, in the left side, you are using differential equation last time. Okay. So, in this half semester, we are discussing about discrete part, okay, which is on the right side here. Is it clear? Okay. So, our particular interest, okay, we will consider situation in which the state of the system okay, at one point in time depends on the state of the system at 
refuse point in time. So, say the state of the system, we put it A. Huh? Okay, or X is up to you to name, right? To give any name, right? So, because this is discrete, okay? So, I will put K. K is discrete. K is 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. Okay? So, then AK plus 1 equal to a function of AK. What does that mean? The future, tomorrow, value of A is equal to a function we don't know the function okay it's any function but the, uh, depends on the value of the state of the system today so tomorrow's value depends on the system today okay this is what is this this is the first order okay this is the first order you already learned differential equation. So in difference equation, the first order is just like this. Simple or not? Okay. So, of course, if you put it into differential, okay, the T is no longer discrete. So instead of 1 here, you can put it into minus DT. Yeah? You see the DT there. The DT can be very, very small, and then you take the limit then you can get the continuous form of a dynamical system. Okay, so there is a connection between the discrete counterpart and the continuous counterpart. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's take, why, 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 why we call this difference equation, right? Because actually there is a difference. Okay, okay say, suppose the, the state variable Okay. We call this level okay, is yk. Okay. Then the first difference, okay, we call this the flow, called the flow rate variable or rate variable, is uh, represented like this. Okay. Delta yk is equal to tomorrow's yk. The, yk plus 1 minus yk okay so because k is up to you all right to define so it can be 0 can be 1 can be 2 and so on so i can just add 1 in here right so say i put k plus 1 in here of course this is exactly the same as this because now this is k plus 1, then this one, k plus 1 plus 1, so become k plus 2, right? Minus what? yk, now this one also plus 1, so become yk plus 1. So these two are actually exactly the same. Okay? These are equivalent to the first derivative of dy dt in the continuous system. Is this clear or not? So when you have a dy dt, okay, in continuous uh, system, so if you want to put it into discrete, it's much easier, right? So you just put it this way. Huh? Is there any question or not? Um, actually, I still don't get like the difference between the differential and the difference. Like, yeah. This is differential, right? dy dt is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when we say difference, it's just uh, today minus uh, yesterday or uh, tomorrow minus today. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Differential is the concept of limit. That means uh, you you take the delta, this one, okay, the difference, and then you put it into limit so that the, the, the difference is actually uh, to the limit of zero. Okay, so dy dt is actually delta y k, okay, well k is approached to zero, right? But here, we are dealing with discrete 
time, in this case, you don't need to limit to zero. This is easier. Okay. Okay. It's this half semester, you can forget about limit. <laughs> okay. So, just difference, just minus. Is it or not? Okay. Okay. So now you have a second order. Okay. Now I'm telling you directly the second order. <laughs> okay. So that the second order difference is just like that. So what is this? The difference of the difference, right? So delta square y k. This is the second order. Right? Hello, hello. Oh, come on, come. Oh, joy is just come. Yeah. No problem. So I have a recording, so you can join. Okay. The the second order difference okay, is exactly the same as the first order, but this is the the difference of the difference. Okay. So okay. In continuous form, you have like this, right? D square y divided by dt square. You learn this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what is the discrete counterpart of this? It's this one. Okay. Delta square yk. Because time is already discrete, so you don't need to divide. Uh-huh. Okay. So how do you do this? So of course, the difference second difference is the first difference okay, so it's equal to d uh, delta of y k plus one minus delta y k right so look at this earlier okay. so delta y k equal to y k plus one minus y k so now i have delta of delta Okay. So this is the first difference, okay? So mm -hmm. if I put the second difference, what I will do, I will put delta again of all of this, right? So then I will have the delta of this one minus delta of that one, right? So this is exactly this. Right. But we all know, okay, delta of yk earlier, right? It is this one. Okay. And then we also know the delta yk plus one, or which is earlier this one. Yeah. Right. Then we just input path. Okay. Then we have this. Right. So this is yk plus two minus k plus one. Okay. Minus this one minus again. So you have two. Two. Okay. So this is the, just the summary. So. Uh, second difference is equal to uh, the day after tomorrow. Okay? The, the second difference of today, k is, is equal to uh, the value of the day after tomorrow minus two times tomorrow okay? plus the value of today. Mm. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, I, I will review again for joy. <laughs> can, can you follow? Okay, okay. So, uh, this is exactly the same. Okay, so we have dynamical system. Uh, previously, we have uh, what is called difference e differential equation. That that is the one that you learn. Uh, in this half semester, we will learn about difference equation. Okay, so difference equation is the discrete counterpart of differential equation, and you also learn about a first order uh, differential, which is uh, dy dt. Okay, so I put it here. The dy dt is actually just the first difference. And then, now if you have the second order, okay, 
uh, of derivative in continuous system with this d square y per dt square. Okay. Now you have uh, the second order difference, okay, which is uh, delta square y equal to y k plus two minus y k plus one plus y k. Okay. Because this is all discrete, so you can put it into Excel. You see? Okay. Much easier than uh, derivative. Okay. Difference is much easier. That's why you can also put it into any programming language. Okay, because this is discrete. Okay. So, remember, uh, uh, discrete observation time, okay, the the variable value in difference equation, okay, the value of the variable can be discrete, can be continuous. Right? But the observation time that is measured discretely. Only the time is discrete. Okay? The value of the variable is continuous or discrete. It's up, it's up to us. Okay? Later when we learn about cellular automata, you will see that the variable value is actually binary or, or, or discrete value. Okay? But uh, most of the time we, we are continuous value. Okay, yeah? So, but the time is always discrete. Okay? What makes it different compared to differential is the time. The time is always discrete. So, when we say discrete, how, how will it apply? Uh, it's up to you to define the time. Okay? Can be one year, can be one day, can be one week, one quarter, it's up to you. As long as uh, it sample at discrete time. Okay? So, that's why uh, many model, uh, simulation model, computer model, even the, uh, what is that? Numerical method is actually use different equation, yeah? rather than different equation. So, a difference equation is more appealing than differential equation for practice. Eh? This is very practical. <clears throat> okay, let's give you example. Uh, okay, I, I still use the pesos, but it's okay, right? The same. So, uh, say in June 2010, you start saving account, say 1,000. 1,000 pesos is around 300,000 rupiah. Okay. So, uh, the bank give you 10% interest. Okay. And then it compound annually. Assume no bank fee. Simplify. Okay. So, the question is, can you make a mathematical formulation of that saving account? How much is your money in June 1, 2022. So, look at this. Why I put exactly the exact date. Yeah? Because I want to make it yearly, right? So, that means exact date of every year. Okay, so, then the model is simple like this. Okay, in June 1, 2010, the time is 0. June 1, 2001, the time is 1. And so on, okay? The other days are irrelevant. And then June 1, 2022, uh, the time will be 12, right? You see? Then, how you will uh, model, okay? Say, I will say A as my state variable, okay? A0 is the amount okay, in pesos, in that case, okay, that you have uh, your account in time zero. So in that case, A0 is 1,000, right? Okay. And then, what you will say? Uh, because 10%, so we will have A0 plus 10%, 0 0.1, multiplied by A0, correct? Okay, A1 is A0 plus uh, 0 0.1 plus A0. Is this correct or not? Huh? And then you what you will get? You will get 1,000 plus 10% of 1,000, which is 100. So you get 1,100. Okay, in A1. In A2, depend on previous value, which is A2 is equal to A1, not A0, plus 0 0.1 times 
A1, right? So you get 1,210 and so on. Okay, so you can put this into Excel if you want, and you will get uh, A12 is equal to A11 plus 0.1 A11, which is 3,138 something. Okay, yeah. So, so this is our first mathematical model. <laughs> Difference. What is this? This is a uh, first order uh, difference equation, right? You will see this is a k plus one, and then this is a k plus ten percent of a k, and then k is from zero, one, two, three, and so on. So, of course, uh, if you want to compute by hand, one by one, right? It's very tedious. So. By computer is easy. Okay. So sometimes you want to know, okay, how if I instead of recursion like that, this is recursive, right? Because uh, a k plus one depends on the previous value, right? So instead of recursive like this, what we will do is I want to get from a zero instead of recursion. Is it possible? Yes. So let's make a substitution, okay? So given a0, okay, a1 is equal to a0 plus 0 0.1 times a0, right? That is exactly the same. Okay. And then what you will do? a2 is the same as before. Okay, a, a2 equal to a1 plus 0 0.1 times a1. Okay. Now, we already know a1, right? So in that case, what we will do, we will substitute eh? so we will substitute a1 here so you get a1 every a1 will put that into a0 plus 0 0.1 a0 right and then multiply by 0 0.1 times a1 again so we input back here right and then we simplify so we get 1.1 square times a0 oh in that case we can continue the same method okay so you get a3 a4 and so on and you can start to see the pattern right what is the pattern a2 equal to 1.1 exponent 2 a3 1.1 exponent 3 oh in that case easy the pattern right oh a k plus 1 equal to 1.1 exponent k plus 1 right that's easy oh easy so this is what is called solution Okay, so when we discuss difference equation, you discuss three things. What is this? Number one is solution. Number two is stability. Okay, oh no, equilibrium first. Okay, and then number three is stability of the equilibrium. Okay, so once you understand these three, you can apply difference equation or differential equation in anything in life including love faith and so on okay <clears throat> this is really amazing uh, one time i will teach you how to model but at this point i will just dis discuss this one first. okay oh uh this is oh how about if the interest rate is not 10 percent okay what if we say uh I percent okay so uh, the interest is 100 times I percent okay so uh, zero I is 0 0.1 right if the interest is 10 percent right so then we can write more general form okay, of the saving account something like this okay, so a n plus 1 equal to a n okay now instead of 0 0.1 okay we change that into i of course the solution is exactly the same right so oh you already know this formula right what is this this is the financial formula in in excel 
BMT. Ya, ya, ya. Oke. So, basically you start you start with the application of financial, oke. Okay? <laughs> oke, okay? so we just derive that formula from where it come from, oke. Okay? Oke, okay, so let's go deeper, oke, okay? in difference equation. So, definition Difference equation is an equation that describes a relationship between state variable at one point in time and the previous okay, or other previous point in time. Okay. So, what is this? So, difference equation is just an equation involving differences. Okay. So, in mathematics, we symbolize difference equation as explicit function like this. Okay. So, uh, yk plus 1 equal to function of yk, yk minus 1, yk minus 2, and so on. Okay. Now, if you want to make it into different, of course, that's easy, right? You just put one of that here from the left side to the right side, uh, from the right side to the left side, then you can get the difference. Okay. But... Instead of using difference, majority, majority of time I don't use this notation uh, difference. I just use this notation. Uh, yk plus 1 equal to function of yk. This is easier. Because now you don't feel it as a difference, but you feel it as just normal function of this. Okay? Easy or not? Hey, this is super easy, right? Compared to differential equation, this is really, really easy. Okay? Okay. Now, I need to tell you several terminology. Okay? So, we said equivalent. How do you say a difference equation are equivalent? Okay? How do we write the equation? Actually, does not really matter. Okay. Whether you are using implicit or you are using difference, okay. they are actually the same. Example here. Look at this. Yk plus 1 equal to 3 yk plus 5. Okay. This is the just example. And then what I will do, I will put one of this yk to the left side. Okay. So I have yk plus 1 minus yk. So this is the first difference, right? Delta. Delta yk, ya. Equal to 2 yk plus 5. So, these two are equivalent. Okay. So, the same thing here. Okay. So, delta yk equal to y, y, 2 y square. So, this is quadratic already. Okay. This is nonlinear. Minus y square k minus 1. This is equivalent to 1. So, because this is delta, delta is Uh, equal to yk plus 1 minus yk. So then I can put it up. That delta. And then one of that I put it here. On the right side. So this is again equivalent. Okay. So. Two equation. Two difference equation are equivalent. Okay? If they are actually using. Uh, producing the same. Uh, sequence okay so after equivalent i will say another terminology which is called identical okay. so two different equations are said to be identical if okay, the infinite set of algebraic equation that they represent are identical so they represent the same set of equation okay the only difference is the starting time So, in equivalent, the starting time and the equation are the same. In identical, okay, the, the equation are actually the, uh, equivalent, but the starting time can be different. Let me take example. So, yk minus 3, yk minus 1 equals 0. For, look at this important, k is equal 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay. This is actually identical to, 
What is this? Yk minus 3 equal to Yk minus 4. 4, what? K equal 4, 5, 6, and so on. Why? Because both of them generate the same sequence okay, for the same initial value. So if you put Y0 equal 1, they will generate this sequence. Is this clear or you want to practice? Okay, let's practice. <laughs> okay, let's practice, okay? Let's go to Excel. <laughs> okay, so if you're not sure, don't worry. Okay? It is so easy, so you can just open Excel, right? <clears throat> So let's share the Excel. So I open Excel. Sir, sorry, your mic is unmuted. Why is mute by itself? <laughs> yeah, it's mute by itself. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so this is our first equation, right, in the slide. So yk minus 3, yk minus 1 equals 0. So to make it work, you need to put uh, yk equals something, something, right? So this, is, so this is the equation, so I put it here into yk equal 3 times yk minus 1. Okay, so I just put uh, this form into the right side. So this is the, the red part here. So this red part, I put it in the uh, right-hand side. So that you can see. Okay, exactly just 
And then once you have that, so you just easily would multiply by yk minus one. What is that? Previous value, right? Then, okay. Then you just copy that. that, that, that. Okay. So and then you will say, okay, I I need to know that this is actually equivalent to what is the other one? This one. YK Oh. I have the second equation with this Y K minus three equal to three times yk minus four okay four k is what four five six seven k equal to four five six and so on so again if you have this what you will do Oh, this is already in the form of yk minus 3 right okay so i will i will use exactly the same so now i have k <coughs> this one eh? y okay let's make it uh, different so that we have a uh, Instead of why I put it Z, is it okay? Okay, so this is ZK. Okay, so K is start from 4. Okay, so again, I put uh, 0. And then, what I will do? Minus 3. Okay. So, uh, k equals 4 here. So, z, k minus 3. So, if k is 4, what is this? Is k is 4, this, maybe I should put this not k, I will put this into different names so that you will know the difference. Uh, what, what name you want? M. Okay, so I will put M here. M supposed to be starting from 4, right? I will just copy this, huh? So what we will do, so, sorry, this is M. So Z M minus three, so M is four. Then what is this? If M is four, then Zm minus 3 become Z1. Correct? Become Z1. Okay. So, become Z1. Hmm. Where should I put? Here? Or, or here? So, <coughs> Z1 equal to three times z m is four zero okay so three times z zero okay then i just copy down exactly the same right 
So the difference is now uh, M is M is starting from four. M is starting from three. Right? Yeah. So this M M equal three is equal to K is zero. Is that, is that correct? I mean, the sequence is exactly the same. Okay. The only difference is the index. Yeah. So when m is equal to 4, for again, now that's equal to. You can put it Z K, that one. It is K is equal to one, <laughs> right? Or you can put it Z M. That's fine also. It's the same. Uh, because. K is here and M is here. And they are actually the same sequence, of course, right? Is this clear or not? Okay. Livy, is it clear? Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Is that correct? Three, one, three, nine, twenty-seven, eighty-one. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Correct. <coughs> I need more than that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <coughs> oh, you already know. What is uh, equivalent and identical? Okay. So now in this course only, yeah. Uh, in this course only. So during exam, for example, I will not tell, right? So this course only. This is our own agreement, okay? Uh, unless I explicitly written, okay, we shall agree that the time start from zero. Is that okay? So if I don't tell anything, okay. So you know that k is start from zero. That's take it point. Okay. Uh, similarly, if I don't tell you the initial value, then take it as zero. Yeah. For example, y zero. I, if I then if I did not tell you anything about the initial value, you can take it as zero. This is our own agreement. Okay. It's not in real life, but this is only during our. Okay, now you already learned about first order, second order, right? First order difference equation, second order difference, differential equation. Now I will tell you any order. Okay, okay. This order, okay. Suddenly you will see, oh, compared to difference e differential equation, difference equation is much richer and much easier. <laughs> okay. Order of difference equation is the difference between the largest and the smallest argument k. <clears throat> okay, example. Yk plus 1 equal to a times yk plus b. Okay, a is a constant, b is a constant. So, what is the order? Look at this. Okay, The highest yk plus 1, right? The lowest is yk. So yk plus 1 minus yk is 1. Okay, next. Uh, yk minus 3 minus 3 yk minus 4 equals 0. So what is the highest? Min minus 3. What is the lowest? Minus 4. So 
k minus 3 minus k minus 4, 1. You see? Again, let, the next one. yk plus 3 plus a yk plus 1 equal to b yk minus 1 plus c. Wow. Look like, uh, just look like a linear equation, right? But the, actually, this is actually what? What is the highest? k plus 3. What is the lowest? k minus 1. Okay? So, you minus, yeah? k plus 3 minus k minus 1, 4. So, now you have actually the fourth difference, differential equation in one stroke. So easy like this, okay? If you use the differential equation, you get starting to get a headache because now you have a, a what? D exponent 4, right? <laughs> Divided by dt exponent 4 and so on. But in difference equation, wow, you don't feel it because, oh, plus, plus 3 and minus 1. That's it, right? <clears throat> so, so easy. Huh? Okay. Later on, I will teach you the meaning huh? uh, between level and rate. Okay, when we when discuss a uh, uh, dynamical system later on. Yeah? So let's discuss mathematics first so that you know the terminology. Yeah? <clears throat> okay, now, what is solution? Okay. Remember, I, I'm, I keep talking about three things, right? Solution, equilibrium, stability. Okay? So what is solution? Solution of a difference equation is an expression or formula that makes the difference equation true for all values of k, yeah? for all values of integer k, yeah? okay. and n does not involve any difference. So, in principle, what you have as difference equation is actually recursive, right? So, the solution means you don't have any recursion anymore. So, you practically creating a formula without recursion. So, this is through algebra. Okay, how do you solve? You solve it using algebra. Okay. For first order easy, you can always use algebra. But when it is non-linear, you cannot solve it using algebra anymore. And sometimes, eh, uh, difference equation, for non-linear difference equation, you cannot even solve it. Okay? But you can still get the equilibrium, you can still get the behavior of the system, stability and so on. But you don't know the solution. Okay? So, you can solve recursively, but you don't know the solution. What is solution then? If I can solve recursively, I can get the plot, right? Yes, you can get the plot. That's the behavior. What is the meaning of solution here is the formula, general formula that does not involve any recursion. Okay? That's the meaning of solution here. So let's, let's take example, okay? <clears throat> this is very simple. Uh, you know, like linear model, y equal mx plus c, right? This is like, this look like a straight line, right? Look like. Okay? Uh, y k plus 1 equal to a, a is a constant, times y k plus b. Okay? Look like a is like the gradient, b is look like the intercept, right? Look like, I'm just saying look like, but this is not. <coughs> Later on, you will show, I will show you the behavior is totally interesting. Huh? So many in, uh, interesting behavior. Just very simple formula like this. Okay. So, we have an initial value of y0. Okay. Uh, let's solve recursively and algebraically. Okay. Okay. So, k equals 0. What we have? Of course, by zero. That's the initial value, right? Oh, k equal one. What we have? So you put the formula. The formula is y k plus one equal to a times y k plus p. So you put it there. Okay. So y y one equal to a times y zero plus p. Oh, y zero is already known. 
with this uh, this y zero. So you put it inside. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the k equal two. Okay. You apply the same formula y y two equal to a times y one plus p, right? Okay. So what you will do? Oh, y one I already know, right? This one, right? So then I will put inside here. Okay. So do you see this? This is y one. Right now, I just simplify a times a is square, right? So a times b, and then plus b, so I have a plus one plus uh, times b, right? So this is just simplification. Okay, this is just algebra, right? Okay, let's go to the k equal three. Okay, again the same thing. Okay, I apply the same formula here, but we already know why two. Right, so I just input this y2 here, and then I simplify it, okay, and then I simplify it again two times, okay. So I get the why I simplify it this way, so that I will have uh, equation with this have the same pattern. Okay, the, the the goal of this simplification of algebraic simplification, so that I will have uh, the same pattern. You will see the pattern here. See. If one k is one is a y zero plus p. If k is two is a square y zero plus a plus p. Yeah. How about if three a three y zero right plus this equation is a four a four y zero plus this equation. Hey, look at this. This is always a exponent k times y zero plus what is this? Look at this. This is four and this is three, right? Two, one, zero, oh, plus one, and yeah, multiply by p. So what is this? This is actually geometric series, right? Okay, you remember, huh? So we, we, if k is n, you you will see. Okay, this is the pattern. Okay, we found this. Okay, the pattern is a n times y zero plus. Oh, this is. Geometric series times B. Oh, we already learned in high school. Geometric series, okay? What is the, the formula, the closed form of geometric series? This one, right? So, geometric series we know equal N if A is equal 1, equal to this formula if A is not 1. Oh, now we get the, the, the solution. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the general for solution of affine, I call this affine difference equation. Okay. Why affine? Because this is constant, this is constant. Eh? So, and the initial value is y0 is this. Okay. Depending on the value of a. Eh? If a is 1, then you have this linear equation. Okay. If a is not 1, it's actually nonlinear. Okay? Do you get it? Where, where this come from, right? This is come from the geometric series a while ago. Uh, until here first, any question? Livy, can you get this? Yes? Just yes. the equation. So, can you derive on your own? <laughs> but I'm sure you can, right? If you want, you can. Okay. Do you understand the derivation or not? Yes, yeah, just simplify it. This just simplify it and find the pattern. That's it. That's it. Okay. There is no real field here. Okay. So uh, I'm just saying. Look, sometimes you cannot find the solution. That's fine. Okay. And in fact, I I give you the solution here. You just memorize. Okay. So that's okay. Oh, you don't like to memorize? That's fine. In in exam, you don't need to memorize anything, right? In my exam, you don't have anything to to memorize. It's always open book, okay? In my open everything. Okay, so clear. This is the this this solution is the one that actually uh, helps a lot, okay? Because now now you can. If you know y0, you don't need to calculate recursively. 
you directly just input the value and get the behavior. Okay, let's practice. Do it on your own. Uh, who first? <laughs> okay, what's the difference equation of this? Oh, what's the solution? You can use calculator. You don't need this. If you have Excel, that's even easier to push, to be very fast. <coughs> YK plus one. <clears throat> yeah, you can you can get directly, or you can use the recursive. Hmm? Is the answer negative? Oh, let me see. Oh, correct. The answer is negative 4091. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you can use uh, the recursive formula or you, you can use the, directly the solution a while ago. Huh? Is that correct? Is that okay, Libby? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I got the same. Got the same. You got the same, right? Yeah, the same. Okay, good. <clears throat> I need to remove the laser and click this. Okay. Hmm. Why? The next. Oh, so this is the <coughs> summary. Okay. Oh. I talk about three things, right? Solution. I already get the solution here. Okay. Second is equilibrium. Okay. I will explain about what is equilibrium in, in a moment. And stability. Okay. <coughs> stability. Stable or unstable. Okay. So this is the actual result. Okay, let's if you go to my uh, tutorial in 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 Revoledu, okay, you will see the behavior of this affine <coughs> okay actually uh, we can start to see the behavior when we plot okay when we plot this so <coughs> okay this is just a summary of the things that i wrote there in my website okay so Okay, so you have this uh, yk plus 1 equal to a times yk plus b, right? So, and then depending on the value of y0, a, and b, then you can start to classify. So, this classification is, uh, I, I'm just making it up. So, uh, from the value of a, you can determine this six value, six possible cases. Okay, so a equals if larger than 1 or equal to 1 or between 0 and 1 or between negative 1 to 0 or if a is exactly negative 1 or if a is less than negative 1 so these are the uh, six possible value of a range yeah, or, or value that will change the behavior okay within that range the behavior is uh, the same And then, uh, if A is 1, you compare the value of B and Y0 uh, to determine the subclasses. Or if A is not equal to 1, again, you compare this value to get the, the three subclasses. Okay? 
Why I want to classify this? Because based on this classification, you get the behavior. Okay, so <clears throat> these are the behavior of just affine uh, difference equation. So if you look at this, okay, the behavior. So I I uh, I like mathematics. So what I'm doing is just looking at the, the pattern and then trying to find the solution and the behavior and then we 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 put this into uh, what classification right so then because constant 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 and so on so I put that together now I, I can put that into 10 only okay let us see <clears throat> what is constant mean okay so this this are the uh, pattern okay, of the formula constant mean like this flat flat line right second possible uh, behavior is linearly increasing this only happen when a is e1 and b is larger than zero okay next is linearly decreasing this only happen when a is equal one and b is less than zero next oh wait i thought this is a linear right equation but look the behavior is not always linear can be exponentially increasing without power. this happen when you have this uh, a is larger than 1 and y uh, y0 is larger than b over 1 minus a okay and <clears throat> you can also have this behavior exponential decreasing without bond okay or exponential increasing to a bond okay or Exponential decreasing to a bound. This is asymptotic, right? When it happened, this is the, the the case. Yeah. And then, oh, you can also create an oscillating with constant amplitude, okay? Or oscillating with increasing amplitude, or in oscillating with decreasing amplitude. Look, because I'm trying to do this uh, classification of behavior, okay, and this is saving me a lot. Why? For example, I want to create a <coughs> multi-agent system. Okay? In fact, I, I did many multi-agent systems, for example, pedestrian for soccer games and so on. Yeah? And what happened is, I want to create the behavior that I want, right? Okay, I want that agent to do something like this. So what I will do, I know the type already. So I know the behavior that I want. And because of that, I know the, the case, right? Oh, for example, I want them to be a constant. For example, a constant. Then I need to put, okay? The value of A, the value of B, the value of Y0 to be any of this case. Okay? So if I want them to come, for example, oh, let's create an agent that will move from here to there over time. Okay? Just move straight line. Then I need to set the A equal to 1 and B must be rather than 0. Okay? Look, this saves a lot. What happened is... During my uh, first time, yeah, I, I, I try just to make an agent that move. Okay? Just a dot to move from one place to another. It doesn't work. Okay? Until we start to realize, oh, the value of the parameter matters. Okay? So once you realize that you just change the value A equal 1 and B is positive, then it will move this way. Can you see? 
this is the connection between behavior that you want to design and the parameter in the range of the parameter. And you will say, oh, but this is only affine. Yes, this is only affine. But at the same time, everything uh, uh, more complicated case, you can simplify it into affine anyway if you want, right? So that you can get at least that is the behavior that you want. <coughs> okay? So that's the way to apply uh, this equation. Knowing the behavior, you can design the parameter. Is that clear? Okay, say, I want, I want them to simulate uh, up and down. Okay. Then, you know, the parameter A must be negative 1. Okay? <clears throat> so, or you want to say, oh, I want to make it uh, larger. Uh, oscillate, but larger. Or oscillate, but closer and closer okay you know the parameter must be between zero negative one to zero of a and y zero must be either one of these okay so okay let's practice let's practice okay? suppose you borrow money now from a credit card company 1% per month interest and you pay uh, 20 every month okay. one peso is about 300 rupiah so you know it's not that much but uh, let's try then the nominal is not really important i want to show you the behavior okay so y0 is 1000 right so you have the dynamical system what is this this is one percent interest per month hey how much is the real credit card uh, interest per month oh yeah zero percent Oh, but the uh, usual credit card is around 3.5% per month, right? Anyway, so let's assume this is 1% per month, okay? And then you are paying 20. Oh, can you uh, make it into Excel, this one? I will create a new Excel. Okay, and why? When k is zero, one one thousand. Okay. So when k is zero, we have one thousand, okay. and then this one is just plus one, right? <clears throat> and then okay, let's make it the uh, interest. And then payment. payment. And then initial. Initial loan. Right, 1000 initial loan. Interest is 1%. So 0 0.01. And then the payment is 20. Right? So this is the one that we put as yellow. So then this one is just the same as this one. So interest, I will put this one. Interest, okay. No, this is interest is I underscore or interest. Interest. Okay. 
and this is the payment so i put name to payment right so what is the value one yeah, okay or oh, one plus right one plus uh, interest is that correct and then multiply by earlier correct minus the payment okay that's it good so you just one you have and then you copy and then now you plot right get the plot oh the question is how many months will you off your original loan oh not yet that mean uh, this is not yet zero how many months huh? 70 months get the uh, 70 months you see <coughs> so oh <laughs> oh this is interesting what will happen if your uh, uh, original debt instead of 1000 now become 3000 What will happen? Really? Oh, can you plot? If that one is... Okay, I will plot like this. Huh? So I will copy this. Here, what is the question? The original debt now become three thousand. So I'll just change this right into three thousand. Tada! Oops. What is the behavior? Can you see the behavior? Why behavior is important? Okay, actually non-linear this one. Yeah, but uh, look, what what happened to your original loan? <laughs> you will never be able to pay. Okay. <laughs> this is credit card debt. <laughs> this is not China debt. This is credit card debt. <laughs> You will never be able to pay your loan. Oh no. Do you start to realize? <laughs> right? Oh. Before this, you, you always thought that uh, when you take a loan and you pay every month, that means you will always be able to pay off one day, right? <laughs> One day you will be able to pay off, right? You always think that way. But look, this is exactly the same uh, equation that you have. So this saves you a lot, right? <laughs> if you pay this way, no, actually you will never be able to pay. Okay? In, in fact, your loan is getting bigger and bigger. Yes, this is uh, helpful for uh, making loan decision. <laughs> now, I, 
mathematically i want to con i want to introduce with the concept of equilibrium okay okay let's try what will happen if you change this loan instead of 3000 become 2000 can you type can you change <laughs> what is the behavior? It's constant. Right? See? It's a constant. Look, now you understand the meaning of behavior. Behavior matter or not? <laughs> okay? One is you pay off your loan. One you never be able to pay off. One is always constant. What is this? This is forever, you will always have loan, but every month you pay, 20, okay? Every month you pay. But you will never be able to pay off your loan because every month you pay. Equilibrium, this is called equilibrium. Okay? This constant value is called equilibrium. Equilibrium is not something that you want, okay? But this is, this is a equal. That's why this is constant. What is the meaning of equal? Meaning your loan and your payment is exactly equal. Uh -huh. <laughs> now you start to realize, oh no, this is what the meaning of debt trap. Okay? When they are talking debt trap, they don't give any behavior, they don't talk about the numbers, they don't show anything, they just talk, that's merely opinion, okay, that is not real, okay. When you say debt trap, show the behavior, then you start to see, oh, I understand the meaning of debt trap now, because it's going up, not going down, or it's constant, it never be able to pay the loan, okay. Otherwise, it's just political you know, just to make people demonst demonstration <laughs> or political rally and so on. But actually, that is not real. Okay? So, this is the real debt trap I'm talking about. Okay? So, the purpose of this lesson is telling you about equilibrium. Okay? So, this 2000 is the equilibrium value. What's the meaning of equilibrium? Constant. Okay? Behavior is flat line. Okay, eh? easy, right? So I introduce you the concept of equilibrium directly. Okay, so this is... And now look at the behavior. Okay, I plot three things here. Oh, y1, Y2, and Y. Okay? At 3000, Okay, you will never be able to pay, right? And at 2,000, the initial debt is actually constant. Lower than 2,000 is actually going down to zero. Okay, one day. We don't know, but one day. Look at the, 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 the behavior of the system. And look at if you disturb from the equilibrium, Okay. The red line here, let me show you. the red line here is actually the equilibrium, right? The red line here is the equilibrium, okay? And then this one, the green line here is above, yeah? Something, any value above the equilibrium. This blue line here is any value below the equilibrium. And look at this. This is always going away from the equilibrium. Can you see? Okay, this is the equilibrium. This is always behavior is going away from the equilibrium. What does that mean? This is, is exactly the meaning of what is called unstable equilibrium. Yeah? If you have a pole and you put a ball on the top of a pole, okay? It's at an equilibrium. It doesn't change. But when you blow a little bit, yeah, it will fall down. That is unstable. Now, if you put the ball and you put the ball inside the ball, okay, that is called stable. 
because if you blow to the right, left, and so on, it will move and then come back again to the equilibrium. You understand the meaning of stable and unstable equilibrium now? Yes. So, and you understand why this is important. Right? Behavior is very important because first, if you can design that behavior, you can control the situation. Okay? And you need to know whether that behavior is stable or not. Okay? Because if unstable, slightly change, it will uh, change everything. Okay? If it is stable, slightly change, it will come back to the equilibrium again. Okay? So this is really important point so in fact the solution itself is not that important you know? the behavior is important okay? the equilibrium and the, the the stability is very important yeah? so when we talk about differential equation different equation this is the the essence okay? not how you calculate the calculation you can just ask the the computer to do it you know but how you will apply is how you will start to see this is the behavior that I want. Okay? Or what is the behavior if this is the system? Okay? Then you start to see uh, what is the meaning of that behavior. Okay? So let's come back with the theory. Okay? So equilibrium constant solution here, right, is fixed point. So, I said in here, constant solution is of extreme importance, not just important, extreme important, because it will tell us what will happen actually in the system. Okay? So, let's, even if you don't know the solution, you will always be able to compute the equilibrium value. Linear or non-linear. Okay? So how to compute? Easy. I will tell you. <clears throat> Suppose you have this equation. Okay? Y k plus 1 equal to function of... It's a function, so I don't know it's linear or non-linear. What kind of function? I don't know. I just say it's a function. Of any order. I did not even specify the order, right? So I can put any order here. So y k, y k minus 1 and so on. Okay? Now I want to get the equilibrium value. Let's call this equilibrium value y constant. So with y star. Okay, just to simplify that. So how to do that? You know what's the meaning? That means this is y star, this is also y star, this is also y star, and so on, right? So okay, let's take example so that you will understand. <clears throat> Find the equilibrium value of this affine. Okay? So the solution is, first you write the difference equation in this form. Okay? Yk plus 1 is a function of yk, right? This one, right? And then, what is this? This y, this function is actually this one, correct? On the right side, okay? So, then you equate this function to y star okay what will happen so this a times y star plus b equal y star why 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 we should do it this way because remember we want to know the constant equilibrium in the constant solution fixed point right what that mean meaning yk plus 1 is y star, yk is also y star, right? Even if yk minus 1 is also y star, so all of these are y star. So that's why this is the constant solution. So after that, you just do algebraically. You see, right? Oh, you know a times y star plus b equal y star. So y star is uh, b divided by 1 minus b. Of course, because this is 1 minus a, so a must not be 1. Okay, it doesn't happen. Oh, you get the equilibrium. Okay, easy. Okay, let's, uh, can you do this? 
can you can can you find the equilibrium value of this quadratic difference equation? Practice on paper. What you will do? Y star equal to Y star square. Okay. Correct. All Y K or y K plus something to Y star. That's it. And then you solve it. So in here, because this is quadratic, you have two equilibrium. Okay. If it's cubic, you have three equilibrium. As simple as that. Oh, difference equation, you will love it because it's so easy. <laughs> right? So, yeah, you have two equilibrium. So, this is just solving quadratic equation, you know. Right? So, this y star is 1 and 0. Clear, clear or not? Is there any question? No, no. Super easy, right? <laughs> wow actually this is very deep but you 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 see this is super easy <laughs> okay let's 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 de define what is the meaning of table okay remember uh, three things uh, solution okay? uh, equilibrium and then stability now I'm talking about stability <laughs> okay suppose okay, you have a dynamical system with an equilibrium value of y star. Okay? So, definition of equilibrium value is called stable okay, or attracting if there is a positive number epsilon such so that the difference between that initial value to the equilibrium is always going to the Limit, meaning that uh, when K is larger than, uh, when K is going up, okay, that value is always less than certain small positive value. Okay. What is the meaning? Regardless the choice of initial value, okay, the solution of stable difference equation will always stable by itself. Okay. Even if you pursue. So, the way I'm, I'm doing it is this. Okay. Maybe next meeting or I don't know when. I, I will discuss later about the, the, the system dynamics so that you will get a better understanding how to model. But at the same time, this is the meaning of equilibrium. Look, okay. This is stable equilibrium or attracting. Okay, remember, yeah, attracting and stable is the same thing. Okay, attracting equilibrium is just like a ball inside the pool. Okay, you can pursue to the left, to the right. Okay, and it, it will come back here. Okay, easy. So, this is a system governed by. Okay, you, you take note. This is called negative feedback loop. Okay, later I will discuss about what is the meaning of negative feedback loop. Okay. So, greater displacement of the equilibrium, okay, the greater the force will push back toward the center of equilibrium. Okay. Let's go to the next one. What is the meaning of unstable? Okay, this is the definition. Look, from any initial condition y0, okay, it will imply okay, that the, the difference between uh, yk to the equilibrium is larger than epsilon. What does that mean? It's going away. Huh? It's always going away from the equilibrium. So, unstable is also called repelling. Okay, 
once you perturb from its equilibrium the solution of unstable remain at perturb value does not return to the original value so doing it this way okay so it's a ball on the top of a ball can you imagine that go cool. so when you just blow poof, and then the ball will fall okay so this equilibrium value Remember, this is equilibrium. That means when you put the ball on the top of the ball, it does not move. Okay, it's a fixed point, right? But when you pursue slightly to the left, slightly to the right, it will fall down, and will never come back to that equilibrium value. So this is the the, the nature, okay, behavior of the nature. So this is called a while ago was negative feedback loops. This is called positive feedback. Okay. The greater displacement of the ball, the steeper the hill, and greater the force pulling away from the equilibrium. <clears throat> oh, sometimes okay, you have what is called neutral or semi-stable. Okay. So this is the behavior. So uh, it's neither stable or unstable. Okay. So, for example, from the right, okay, if the equilibrium attracts solution that start from the right, but repel from the start of the left, and vice versa. So this is called semi-stable. Okay, sometimes we have a system with this kind of behavior, okay, depending on the left or right, okay, bigger or smaller than the equilibrium will have different behavior. Now, you want to know, oh, you already know how to do solution, you already know how to get the equilibrium, now how do you get the stability, right? Okay, so suppose y, okay, a y star is the equilibrium, okay? So let's put that into this kind of system, okay? And then... An equilibrium is stable or attracting if, <laughs> look at this, you put this into function, right? And then you will use calculus earlier, like, like, like earlier. So you take the first derivative and then you put inside that y star value. So you need to calculate the equilibrium value first. Okay? And then you put into this y star value and you check the value, absolute value. If this is less than one, then it's stable. If larger than one, then it's unstable. Wow, this is so important eh? because with this, now you can design your system, okay? You can design your behavior that you want. But there's a part. Okay? When the first derivative of y star is exactly one. This is the headache come. Okay. You have a headache because the work is inc inconclusive. You don't know it's stable or unstable. But only that small case, you know, with this, right? So if less than one, you know, this is uh, less than one mean what? Absolute value less than one is mean between negative one to positive one. Right? Okay. Zero is included. So between negative one to positive one. That is stable. Okay. If ab above uh, one or less than negative one, okay, negative two and so on, that is unstable. Okay. So what is this? This is actually the eigenvalue of the system. Okay. If, if you, you already learn linear algebra, right? Okay, so, oh, what happened? So this is the eigenvalue system. Anyway, so when uh, the first derivative of the equilibrium value is exactly one, this is the headache. So the work is inconclusive. Then you ask, oh, is this for a linear only? No, this is general. 
okay, including nonlinear, it's exactly the same. One by one. Okay, for each equilibrium, you need to check whether this is stable or unstable. Yes, that is possible. So remember, there is possibility that uh, from the left is stable, from the right is unstable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you need to check one by one for each equilibrium value. Okay. If you have a cubic equation, for example, you have three equilibrium value, then check one by one. They probably be different. Okay. That's why this is for its y star. Okay, this is how you find that stability. Oh, let's practice. Okay, this is a uh, two actually. Can you do it by hand? This one. What is the stability of this? Now you need paper and pen. <laughs> but this is interesting, huh? Because now, if if later on, eh, much later on, we will we'll discuss about how you model, okay? And then from there, uh, of course, from, if you already know how to model, then you can create that equation, right? Okay. At this point, we just discussed, oh, if you have this equation, you will find the equilibrium, you will find the stability. But uh, I did not even discuss how you will get this equation, right? From the application, from the real world, okay, how you will get the equation. That is the one that we will discuss uh, in much later. I think this is very interesting class. <coughs> okay, because you will be able to apply I don't know. You want to have a project for this or <laughs> oh, too much project already? Okay. No need. No need. <laughs> Equal to? Yeah. Uh, first, you need to get the equilibrium, right? So this is a uh, y star. This is another y star. This is y star square, right? So first you get the equilibrium. After that, for its equilibrium, you check the stability. Right? How you check the stability? You get the, this is a function on the right hand side, and then take the first derivative. Eh? You see, right? Anyway, if possible, make it as a polynomial like this, eh? so that uh, easier to find derivative. Yeah, two. Okay. Yes. So you put that into the form of this, right? This function, and you already get the uh, equilibrium value. With okay. So there are two, right? Zero and two point seventy five. And then you take the first derivative. Yeah? This is the first derivative, right? Yeah, three, three point two. So y, so we remove that one, and then zero point eight. This is square, so multiply to one point six x. Correct? Okay. And then now you put inside one by one. Huh? So, so for 2.75, okay, you will get one, negative 1.2, okay, because this is negative 1.2, okay, uh, absolute value is larger than 1, right? So that means this equilibrium is repelling. Yeah. When you put 0, again you get 3.2, again this is repelling. So both of them are repelling in this case. Then you can start to to uh, 
uh, graph eh? so that you will know the behavior of the system. Eh? <coughs> okay, so look using a very simple method. Okay, if you can get that uh, difference equation, then you know how to calculate the equilibrium, how to get the stability. Okay, tell me, uh, is this useful for you or not? I don't know. Yeah. Ah, okay, the borrowing problem a while ago. Can you practice? Can you get the equilibrium? This is so easy. Only one. Get the equilibrium and then check the stability. What was in the Excel a while ago? In the Excel a while ago, still one correct. Uh, we have a clip room of two thousand, right? Supposed to be. Stable or unstable? Hmm. Okay. It's unstable, right? So you can uh, check. Okay, so you put in this form. Okay. And then the equilibrium value you can calculate it easily. 20 divided by 0 0.01, so 2,000. That's exactly the same like your Excel, right? A while ago, right? No. <coughs> so we just uh, calculate algebraically. And then uh, stability, again, the same as your Excel. Okay? Repelling. Okay? So this is the meaning of repelling, right? And you see why this is repelling? Because the first derivative of x is 0, uh, 1.01. Okay? The absolute value is larger than 1. Okay? So... Yes, this is repelling. Yeah. Wow. Good. Yeah. In just less than three hours, <laughs> you you already learned a lot. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So, okay. so thank you for today. I hope you enjoy the lesson. <laughs>